be a four-part series. So over the next four weeks, we're going to be talking about this particular thing. And this, this message, uh, this sermon series, the title of it is The Lies We Tell. The Lies We Tell. Now, it's a spin on words because a lot of times the lies we tell ourselves keep us from being the person God wants us to be. Because the thing about a lie, and I wrote it down so you can read it on the PowerPoint, a lie believed as truth will affect us as if it were true. If you believe a lie long enough, you'll believe it's the truth. Right. Amen. How many of you have ever been guilty of telling a story so long the wrong way, that's the way you perceive it happening now? Because you've told it so many times. Uh, I think of it as like a fishing story. If you go by, you know, we went fishing and caught a fish this big. Well, 10 years that fish will be this big because, and it'll capsize the boat. We can have enough men to get it in there because we elaborate and these lies become whopping truths. But the problem is in our, walk, in our walk with God is a lot of these lies that the devil has whispered in our ears at one time or another, we believe them. And we, we walked out these lies as if they were true. Everybody somewhere along the line has been told you're not good enough. You're worthless. You'll never make it. You'll never be the Christian pastor is. You'll never be the Christian Robert is. You'll never be on that level. You're always going to be down here. Sometimes we were told that by the whisper of the devil. Sometimes he used other people's voices to tell us that. Sometimes he used our parents or our grandparents or someone we trusted or someone we loved that began to tell us this lie and we believed it and bought into it. So for us, it's become the truth. And the thing with it is that it can affect your life the same way. The great thing about it is over this series is we're going to attack some of the big ones. We're going to attack some of the ones that get in our way from being what God wants us to be and what God called us to be. Because I promise you, the devil is a liar. Amen. Right. I promise you. I'm going to show you in the Bible. In John chapter 8, if you have your Bible, you can follow along with me. And we're going to be on the power for you. These two scriptures you're going to hear over the next four weeks. So you'll probably have them memorized by the time we're done. John chapter 8, verse 44. The Lord is speaking here. He says, When the devil lies, he speaks his native language. For he is a liar and the father of lies. Amen. Jesus told us when the devil's talking, he's lying. Amen. So if his mouth is open, he's lying. Amen. Amen. John 8, 32 says, Jesus also makes this promise. He says, Then you will know the truth. And the truth will set you free. Amen. So the devil is a liar, but Jesus is the truth. He said to himself, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Yeah. So the devil is a liar, and Jesus is the truth. Amen. The Bible also says, let God be true, and every other man a liar. God is what is true in our lives. What he says of us is our truth. It is what we should believe. It is what we should embrace. So that's where we're going. And I hope in this message, in this series today, uh, over these next few weeks, that you begin to embrace a part of yourself that maybe you've held back for a long time because it's hidden behind some kind of lie, some kind of insecurity, some kind of feeling of not, I'm not worth it or I'm not valuable or, or I, I can't do it the way they do it. I promise you, everything God has for you, He's made a way for you to achieve it. I promise you that. It doesn't matter how many mountains you're looking at, how many devils, how many giants are in front of you. God has made a way for you to overcome all of that. Because he wouldn't put them in your path if he didn't make a way for you to defeat them. Amen. Amen. So, when the devil's talking, he's lying. So if the devil's ever told you anything, you might as well rejoice because whatever he told you is the exact opposite. All right. <laughs> So if the devil called you a loser, you ought to say, well, that means I'm a winner because he can't tell the truth. If the devil tells me nobody loves me, then I mean somebody out there loves me because he's a liar. He cannot tell the truth. So I want you to remember that as we go. But today we're going to attack this first big lie over the next four weeks. And this is the big lie. And I promise we've all felt it one way or another. Today's lie is I have to be strong. I have to be strong strong. And some of you right now are saying, well, yeah, Pastor, I do have to be strong. No, you don't. It's a lie we tell ourselves. I don't have to be strong. I do not have to be strong enough. We've all convinced ourselves that we do. And when we convince ourselves that we have to be strong enough, 
we immediately disqualify ourselves from anything that challenges us and challenges our strength. Every time. If I say, hey, can you lift this weight? And you say, well, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. Have you ever tried? No. I just, it just looks big. It looks heavy. I'm not really a power lifter person. I don't have a lot of muscles. I don't think I can do it. You will live your whole life not ever trying. <clears throat> So the problem, the problem is in our spiritual walk with God, when we convince ourselves I have to be strong enough, immediately we, dis, we, we disqualify ourselves of ever being used of God and allowing Him to be our strength. We put it in our own shoes. I'm not strong enough to be a Christian. I'm not strong enough to live right. I'm not strong enough to do this or do that. When I begin to embrace my weaknesses, that's when God can step in and I can lean in to His strength. Right. So we're going to talk about that today. I'm going to talk about two, uh, four top areas, in my opinion, that most people feel they have to be strong in. And you, this may, um, these are not all the areas. These are just some of the top four. Top four is this, emotionally strong. I can't let anybody see me cry. All right? <laughs> I can't let anybody, let anybody see me broken. I can't, I can't show anybody any weakness. I have to be emotionally strong. I have to be a pillar. I have to be solid. I can't let anybody know that I'm weak. I can't let anybody know that I got problems or I got issues. I can't let anybody see me. That's a lot of men mentality. We were raised to don't, ever, don't cry. Don't cry. It doesn't matter what happens to you. Don't you cry. Don't you cry. Uh, we were, that was pounded into us. Uh, and, 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 and that's fine. I, I'm not telling you you should be a crybaby all the time. Um, I'm telling you, though, that emotionally strong can, can hold you back. When you think, well, I have to be emotionally strong, I promise you, there's going to be times where God challenges you emotionally. That it's going to break you, and that's a good thing to be. We'll talk about that more in a little bit. Provisionally strong. i got to bring home the bread, you know. got to bring home the bacon. i got to provide I gotta provide for everything because if I don't do it, nobody else will. Will I have to provide? I gotta provide everything. I gotta provide my joy, my hope, my happiness, my dreams, my future. I gotta provide everything. I gotta provide my food. I gotta provide my home, my truck, my 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 whatever, my, my marriage. I gotta provide for that. I gotta provide for my kids. I gotta be a provider. I got to do it all, and I have to be strong in this because if I'm not strong in this, then I have no value. The problem is when we try to provide everything for ourselves, we kick out the provider in our life. Yeah. We kick out what God wants to do in your life. So therefore, trying to be strong, you're actually making yourself weaker. So we provisionally, here's a big one, spiritually strong. Man, I gotta be spiritually strong. I gotta let everybody know how good a Christian I am at all times. Because if they if they don't see me as a good Christian, if they don't see me as as an upstanding person, if they don't see me with all of my spiritual warrior emblems and, and scars all the time, then they're gonna think less of me, and they're gonna think that, that I'm not even saved at all. Amen. Amen. We're bad at that in Christian life. We are. We want to come and show off and polish our medals and say, look, look, I'm a better prayer than you, and I know the word better than you, and, and I know this better than you, and I've been doing it longer than you. All right. We've got to show ourselves spiritually strong. The problem with being spiritually strong is you can get to convince yourself that you're so spiritually strong that you don't need God anymore, that you don't need to read like you used to. You don't need to pray. You don't need to do the thing because you've already mastered it all. all right. I've ran into people saying, we need to read your Bible. I've already read it. All right, then. I've already read it once. Amen. If that's your mentality, hey, you're, you're cruising for a bruising. Because I can read stuff, but I forget. And think about that Bible. The more I read it, the stronger I become. The more I realize I need him to make me spiritually strong, the less I depend on Chad and the more I depend on him. Amen. Professionally strong. Hey, if I ain't getting promoted... If I ain't climbing that corporate ladder, if I ain't getting raises, then I ain't doing nothing. Right. Got to get keep climbing. Got to keep climbing. I got those doors aren't going to open themselves. I got to kick every one of them down, and I got to step on whoever I got to to get there. I got to get that climb. I got to climb. Got to chase that paper. Got to get that money. Uh, Amen. Right. A lot of people. You may this may not affect you, but there's a lot of people in this world. That's where they feel like they've got to be the strongest. 
is they've got to because if they can't have the same job for 20 years in the same position, well, I'm wasting my life. I got to do extra. I got to do more. I got to spend more hours there. I got to do this. And they're trying so hard in their own strength to make themselves look strong in their profession that a lot of times they neglect their relationship with God in the pursuit. Professionally strong. These are only four areas. We're going to talk more about them. The truth is, and here's the truth. I already told you the big lie. Here's the truth. Our strength is limited, but God's strength is unlimited. There's only so much Chad Kirk can do. There's only so much studying he can do. There's only so much preaching he can do. There's only so much praying he can do. There's only so much witnessing he can do. There's only so much. There's only 24 hours in a day, gang. We all got limits. We all got limitations. I'm limited in what I can do and what I can produce. But I serve a God who is limitless. I serve a God who has no limits. He never gets tired. He never exhausts himself. He, we have tried to tap into the power of God for thousands of years. And we still have not seen all of his glory. We still have not seen any part of it of what God has prepared for them that love Him. There's so much more power than we've ever seen. There's so much more of God than man has ever discovered. Have you ever just allowed that thought to roll over you? Come on, guys. Some of you older saints who've lived through these great revivals, who've seen the power of God, do you realize we haven't seen anything yet? We haven't seen anything of what our God can do. Our God can do so much more than what we've seen and what we've lived through and what we've heard. Amen. Amen. So I'm I'm limited. I'm limited in what I do. I'm limited in what I can be when I'm focused on what I can do. I'm limited. But when I focus on what God can do, there is no limit. I'm limitless. Ooh, what feels good to say? Yes. Amen. There's, no, there's no ceiling. There's nowhere where I can say, well, that's as far as I can go. Because not even the sky is the limit. Because right. he sits above the sky. Uh-huh. Hallelujah. Oh, he sits Lord. above top of it. There's, there's nothing. There's no limit to what we can do in God. But there is a limit in what I can do. There's a limit in what you can do. But sometimes we're so hard to under pretend that we're strong in different areas that we limit ourselves because we've stopped from we've stopped depending on the provider. Yes. And we've started looking at ourselves of what we can do. Yes. Isaiah 40, 30, 31 says this. Even youths grow tired and weary. Believe that or not? We see all these young people running around doing all this stuff. Even the most rambunctious of children will eventually tire themselves out. I know sometimes it seems like it never happens, but it does. I know when I was young, my mom used to say, you would just bounce off the walls until you just passed out. Everywhere I went. She even has pictures of me standing up sleeping. Anybody got pictures of themselves? Like when I was little in a diaper, just standing there. Just couldn't go no more crash. What's that saying? What's that saying to us? It's telling us that it doesn't matter how strong you are in any of these areas. No matter how gifted you are in any of these areas, there's going to come a day where you crash. There's going to come a day where you grow weary in what you can do. You're going to come to a wall. You're going to come to a place of exhaustion. You're going to come to a place where what you can do is not enough. It's going to happen. And young men stumble and fall. But those who hope in the Lord, listen to that. Those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. Hallelujah. My strength is in the Lord. It's not in me. It's not in what I can do. It's not in my smarts, my wits, my studying, my whatever. It's not in any of that. It's in my hope in who He is. In the Lord will renew their strength. They will soar on wings like eagles. Let me tell you something about an eagle. An eagle flies higher than any other bird. Flies higher than any other bird. And the great thing about eagles are they use the storm to climb higher. Other other birds run away from storms. They hear thunder. They see winds. They run away. They fly away from it. They try to get away from it. An eagle will face the wind. An eagle will fly dead into a storm because he's not going to go through the storm. He's going to use the wind of that storm to propel him above the storm. 
This is what can happen when you put your strength in God. When you stop trying to be strong enough on your own and let God be your strength. Let God. Because then the storms that come, the weariness that comes, the, 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 the brick wall that we hit in our flesh... It doesn't have to be the end of my story. It doesn't have to be the end of where I finish and I say, well, that's as far as I can go. No, I can use that same stuff in my hope in God to rise above that and go beyond. Yes. Go beyond. Amen. Very popular Toy Story. Anybody seen Toy Story? Uh -huh. To infinity and beyond. Remember him? <laughs> to infinity and beyond. That's the kind of Christians we need to be. That where, how far can you go, Chad, to infinity and beyond? Why? Because he owns infinity. He is beyond. He, there's nothing I can do. He's there. He's timeless. There's nothing holding him back. And if he wants to take me to the moon and back, he can. He can take me wherever he wants me. But I've got to trust in him and not in me. They will run and not grow weary. How far can you run right now? <laughs> you want to do some races in the parking lot? <laughs> Woo! Some of us get like three steps. We're like, whoa, man. Whoa, man. <laughs> How far can you run spiritually? How far can you run professionally? How far can you run emotionally? How far? Because I guarantee there's going to come a time when you're winded, when you're tired, when you need a break. But the Bible says, if I put my hope in Him and not me, that I will run and not grow weary. I will not grow weary. I will not be held back by my limitations. I will not be held back. Where other men fall short, I'm going to keep on going. Where other people can't see it through and can't make it through and can't get to the finish line, that doesn't apply to us because our strength is not in us. Our strength is in our God. And what He says is what we believe about ourselves. Amen. That's not arrogance. That's faith. Yes. He says they will not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. And not be faint. That's amazing. That's amazing. That I've got, you say, how does this happen? There's so many scriptures I can go here, but I want to give you this one. The Bible says that there is like a river of living water inside of here. When I do not grow, don't grow faint, it means I'm not getting by just because of my own soundness or, or my own capability to deal and handle and juggle and put places and be, be prioritized. No, no, no. That will all fall short. But there's something inside of me pumping me, driving me. Giving me something. It's inside of you. If you'll let God tap into it, you oh, yes. will go farther than you've ever been before. Oh, yes. Amen. Amen. Yeah. How many ever heard of an Antigian well? Uh -huh. Everybody know what it is? How many of you don't have a clue what an Antigian well is? <laughs> Alright, it was my tip. One day this guy, he was he would go to work the same way every day, and he would go and he looked look up on his hill, and there was a man up there just pumping a well. Just pumping. He's like, man, that guy's working hard. And he'd go to work, and he'd turn around, and he'd come back the same way. And he'd look up there, and this is eight hours later. That guy's still up there. Ooh, 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 just pumping away. Happened Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Every day, look up there, going home and going back. That guy, ooh, boom, just pumping and pumping and pumping. And he's like, that dude's got to be the most fit dude on the planet. Because I see him pumping that well all the time. So one day he said, I'm going to go visit him on my day off. I'm going to go up there and see how in the world he's doing that. Well, he went up there, and when he got on the property, he realized that's not a real man. <laughs> it was a whale. And what pumped the man was the whale. <laughs> it was just a man that the whale, the whale itself, that's what an Antiguan well is. It pumps itself. And it was pumping that man. That, that man wasn't pumping that whale. That whale was pumping that man. When you get into what God, I don't pump God up. I don't prime God up. I don't prime His presence or His strength up. I don't pray it down. I don't sing it down. No, He is what's fueling me. It is His water that's keeping this man pumping. It's Him fueling me and what I do. Amen. When you realize that's the way God is in your life, you will cast down your limits. You'll cast down, oh, well, I can never do that. I can never be that. I can never go there. I can never accomplish that. 
when you realize there's something inside pumping you. The truth is, and it's going to break your heart, we have to be weak. And what I say when I say weak, I don't want you to misunderstand me. When I say weak, I don't mean sinful. When I say you got to be weak, I don't mean sinful. Well, Pastor said I have to be weak, so I just got to keep on sinning like normal. You know, I just got to be weak. I'm just weak, Pastor. No, no, no. I'm not talking about being sinful. I'm talking about there's a weakness in all of us all, and we have to. God is counting on it. God made you that way. Amen. Well, I thought the Bible says I'm fearless and wonderful to obey. Yes, you are. Fearfully, wonder, wondrously made by God. God created you just the way He wanted you to be. But He put inside you weakness. Yes. Let me read it to you. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 and 10 says, But He said to me, this is Paul, one of the great men of God, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses. What? <laughs> I'm going to boast in how weak I am. That's what Paul said. Paul, believe me, there's another part in the scripture where Paul said, hey, you want to boast in the flesh? Let's do it. He's like, I'll go to battle with anybody. <laughs> He's like, listen, I'm of the stock of Benjamin. I'm a Pharisee. I'm educated. Paul can speak 13 different languages fluently. He was a Jewish Roman citizen. You know how hard that is to be? Paul can do it. Paul can lay down boasting if he wanted to. He said, you want to measure me up, let's measure. He said, but I'll tell you one thing. All this I count but dumb. I count it all as nothing. Because what I have is more precious than what man can do. I've got God in my life. Yes. So i got to be glad about my weaknesses. Oh. Why? Let's read the next part. So that Christ's power may rest on me. Yes. Ooh. That is why, for Christ's sake, I delight in weaknesses. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Yes. Hallelujah. Paul said, I'm not going to sit here and focus on everything I do good and everything I do right and all the good stuff in my life and let you see that side of me. He said, no, no, no. I'm going to show you my messed up part. I'm going to show you my weakness. I'm going to show you how messed up my life could be if it wasn't for the hand of God resting on my life. If it wasn't for the power of God, you wouldn't see the man you see standing up here right now if it wasn't for the power of God because I would have messed it up a long time ago. But because I can stand here anointed to preach and teach this word, to fill this holy place. The reason why I'm here is not because I got degrees. It's not because I studied real hard. It's not because the right door is open. I said I am nothing, God. I am useless, but you are everything. And if you can take this and make something out of it, then I'll give you all the glory. That's how you become something in God. It's not about boasting of how awesome you are. It's about how awesome He is. And how we wouldn't be anywhere without Him. It goes across the board. Anything you want to apply it to. We want to be a great church. You know how we do that? By being a weak church. Meaning we can't program it. We can't entertain it. We can't conjure it. We can't do whatever. I can preach you happy. I can tell you what you want to hear, but that's not what you need. I will be in my weakness. I will say, you know what? We're all messed up, and we all need Jesus, and we all need more of God, and we all need the power of God. And when we come in like that, God can rest on us. He can settle down among us and say, yeah, now you get it. Now you know you're nothing without me. Amen. 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 That's what makes a strong body. That's what makes a strong yes. church. It's when we realize that we're not perfect. Yes. But man, He is. Yes. And His perfection can rest on us. Yes. That's awesome. He can rest on us. That's amazing. God's divine influence. Listen to this. God's divine influence is exactly enough yes. to meet our every need. For His explosive, miraculous power is made completely perfect in us when we are broken before Him. Amen. When I come in full of myself, I'm going to leave full of myself. All right. Amen. 
When I come in saying, I don't need none of this preaching, teaching, no pastor talking about sin, talking about this, I don't need none of that. Man, I've been delivered and I'm living good. And, you know, I've saved, sanctified, Holy Ghost filled on my way to heaven. You know, I got one who filled on the front of the gate right now. I'm all right. <laughs> oh. That's why you leave here and say, well, that wasn't a very good message. That wasn't a very good sermon. I didn't, I didn't feel nothing at all. <laughs> You know why you didn't feel nothing at all? Because you got a lot of you. You came in full of you, you left full of you. But man, when you come here full of nothing, when you come here saying, Lord, help me, Jesus, i got to make it through another week. Monday is coming, gang. It is coming. If the Lord don't take us today, and Monday is coming. And I don't know about you, but I need help. For Monday. I need help for tomorrow. I can't make it through this on my own. I gotta have him. I've lived it a while now, but I haven't mastered it. I have not. I'm following him. I'm learning from him. I'm learning everything I can. Whatever word he speaks, I want it in my life. I want it to be alive in me. I don't want one verse, one chop, one tittle to escape my mind because I think I'm too good for that particular message. I want it all. Because oh, yes. oh, yes. I know how weak Chad can be. I know how messed up Pastor can be. Yes. And I need him every day. Yes. I need him every second. I need him every hour. I can't do nothing without him. Nothing. But when I present myself broken before him, saying, God, I need you so much, that's when he comes in. And his perfection takes over. <laughs> That's when he comes in and he shines. I promise you, it works if you'll do it. Amen. Ephesians 6 and 10 says this. Finally, finally, be strong in the Lord. Amen. And in his mighty power. Amen. Not yours. Not yours. Yes. I don't have any mighty power. Right. Huh? And neither do you. Sorry to burst your butt, but you don't. Well, I got this going for me. I'm not saying you don't have strengths. I'm not talking about just being good at something. We all got abilities. We all got things that God has blessed us with that we can do. But that's not going to take you where you need to go. God's got to tap into your weakness to get you there. Not your strength. Your weakness. Because that is where you're going to mostly rely on Him. That's it. That's it. I get up here and preach to you guys every Sunday, every Wednesday, sometimes Tuesday. I get up here and speak to you guys. It's not because I'm a great speaker. I hate speaking in front of people. <laughs> I get up here. I hate studying. I hated school. I hate studying. I hate studying. You say, oh, you hate studying the Bible? No, I've learned to fall in love with it. But I understand that if it was up to Chad, it wouldn't be what you guys see or what you hear. It has to be God. I have to lean upon Him. Because if I lean upon Him all week and say, God, I got nothing. I can't come up with something. I'm not smart enough to come up with a message. I'm not smart enough to put three points together. I can't do it, God, unless you tell me verbatim what to say. I'm out. Then God says, okay, I can tell you what to say. Now get up there and say it. And then you guys say, oh man, pastor's really good. No, I'm not. I'm just good at following orders. I'm good at listening to what he says. If he says say it, I say it. If he says do it, I do it. And that's where the greatness comes in. It's not me. It's not anything. It's not my record. It's not my degree. It's not any of that. It's because I'm listening to him. And his perfection can sit upon this imperfection. That's the way it's handled. That's the way you do it. In every area of your life, that's the way you do it. We'll leave you with this. Some questions. i got four questions for you. And I'm closing. Which strong, and I put strong in parentheses there, meaning which lie, do you often wrongfully embrace? I gotta be strong. I gotta be a strong businessman. I gotta be a strong spirit. I gotta be. I gotta be a strong mom. I gotta be a strong dad. I gotta. I gotta be. I gotta be strong in this. I gotta be a strong provider. I gotta be a strong money maker. I gotta be strong. If it's not me. If it's not for me. If if I ain't doing it, nobody's gonna do it for me. The greatest thing 
great thing I love about God is I can trust Him. Amen. And when I come to Him and say, I cannot do this, Father. He doesn't look at me and say, well, you're pathetic. You're no good. Right. You've been with me all this time and you can't do this? You mean you can't move that mountain? You mean you can't walk on that warm water? You mean you can't just, you know, survive in that fiery furnace by yourself? No, Lord, I can't. I can't. If you cast me into that den, those lines are going to eat me up, Lord. I need your help. I can't do it. I can't do it. I need you. That's a good place. That's a good place to be. But where have you wrongfully embraced that? Where have you kicked God out of the equation because you're supplying you and you alone? What weakness do you need to embrace? This is a hard one. What area of your life do you finally need to look at yourself in the mirror and say, you know what? I'm not strong enough to do it. You say, oh, it's going to break my heart, Pastor. Yeah, it will. But the great thing about God is God will put it back together. Amen. He'll show you. You know what? You tried so hard in yourself to be a good man, to be a good Christian, to be a good godly woman, to be a good parent, to be a good employee. You tried so hard. But finally, if you'll just admit, God, I can't do it. I can't do it. I'm not good enough. The world has taught us never to say that. The world has taught us and the devil has lied to us. Why? Because if we believe the lie that we got to be good enough, then it gives him free reign our whole life to discourage us. To discourage us. Now when the devil whispers in my ear and says, hey, you know what? Chad, you're not going to make it. I say, you know what? You're absolutely right. I'm not going to make it. But me and Jesus will make it. Me and God will make it. Oh, yeah, devil, you size me up and you've got me. You've got me dead to rights. But you don't just see me. It's me and my God. Amen. It's me and him together. Yeah. And that's how we win. That's how we make it. So what weakness do you finally need to embrace? Here's another one. Do you feel you have to be emotionally, provisionally, spiritually, or professionally strong? Those big four. Do you feel in some area that that's where you've got to be? Have you ever thought of allowing God to be your strength in that area? To actually get in on your hands and knees, to humble yourself in the sight of God and say, God, I can't be the businessman that I want to be without your help. I can't be the emotional person I want to be without your help. I can't. I need your help. I promise you that's when your mountain will crumble. That's when your giants will fall. When you finally own up to that. And last but not least, how are you allowing God to be your strength? How are you allowing God to be your strength in your weak place? Don't just talk it up to say, well, Pastor, I'm just not good in that area. I'm just not good. Because I'll agree with you. You're right. You're not. And you can say the same thing about me. Pastor, you're just not really good about that. I got my weaknesses. You're right. I am not perfect. I got problems. I got holes. I got things that, that I struggle with. I'm not going to hide them from you. I'm not going to pretend to be something I'm not. But I'm also not going to let it hold me back. I'm also, I've also been in this long enough to, to rely upon God for a few things. And you may say, Pastor, you're not a good pastor at all. I don't agree with you. There's ones out there better than me. But I'm doing the best I can with what God has given me. And I know with me and him, we're going to make it. Amen. And when it's all said and done, I may not rank up as the best of the best to ever do it, but I'll be the best Chad Kirk I could be, and that's all he's asked me to be. He didn't ask me to be nobody else but me. That's it. And if I'll do that, I'm going to make it, and so will you. And you'll take, it'll take you farther than you've ever dreamed. I'm standing before you right now, going farther than I ever dreamed I would ever go. If you had told me when I was just a hillbilly running the mountains of West Virginia that one day you're going to pastor a church in Victoria, Texas, I said, you lost your ever loving mind. I am never living in West Virginia. There's a reason why they call it almost heaven. Amen. I'm going to start singing country roads. I love it. It's my home. But why are you here, pastor? Because I was led. I was led. 
God said, you don't want to be out of that comfort zone? Well, I'm going to take you away from it. I'm going to take you all the way across the nation. All right, then, God, here we go. The one thing I know is never, there's never been a place he's led me where he hasn't helped me to accomplish what he sent. He never told me to do anything on my own. He never ever gave me one message, one thing, one thing to do, one thing to say, one thing to accomplish that he didn't say, hey, I'm not asking you to do this on your own. I'm asking you to do this with me. Now, when you begin to work like that, all of a sudden the limitations fall off. And the lies of the devil screamed at you that you can't do it. You're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not spiritual enough. You're not professional enough. You don't look the part. You don't talk the part. You don't do this. You don't do that. Guys, I make up my own words when I preach. It's not all in the English vocabulary. I know I do. But you know what I'm saying. <laughs> don't let that stuff hinder you. But let God take you to a new height and a new level. Sister, will you come play for me? Don't ever feel like you can't do something. Because I promise you, when you feel like that too much, you're feeling too much in your own perspective of what you can and cannot do. You want a big name to go with the story? How about Moses? Got a big enough name for you? God told Moses, you're going to be my deliverer. He's like, no, I'm not. <laughs> You got the wrong dude. That's basically what he said. He's like, God, I can't do this. He's like, I can't even talk. God, don't you know I'm a wanted killer? I ran from that nation. I'm a murderer there. They've got my face up on the wall looking for me. God said, yeah, but I got the right guy. You. I can't do it. I don't even know who you are. That's basically what he said. He's like, I don't even know who to tell him to send me. Tell him the great I am sent you. And that wasn't enough for him. Well, I just can't do it. I can't go alone. I got, someone has to talk for me. Well, good enough. Here comes Aaron. Aaron will do your talking. But you still got to go and you got to still carry the big stick. Because you're Moses and you're the one I picked. Did Moses knock it out of the park all the time? No, he did not. He argued with God. He doubted God. He said this. At one point, his whole mission, he was just like, God, kill them all. I'm done with this. One. Kill them all. Read your Bible. He said it. Believe me, I pray that sometimes. Lord, just wipe them all out. Take them home. We'll start over. <laughs> I'm just picking. <laughs> Moses was to that point. But we know him as Moses. Moses, a friend of God. A person who God used mightily. Bring the law. Moses, mighty Moses, yeah, him. He had to see beyond what he could do. And he had to start trusting in what God could do. Amen. And what God can do is so much more than you and I can do. But here's the thing. We often want to eliminate ourselves and put it all on God's shoulders. How many times have you prayed, God, if you really wanted to, you could just say it and it would happen. You make wine to God like that? I do. All the time. God, if you just wanted me, you could snap your fingers and make me a millionaire. You could do it. God, you do it. You could do it for me. He's not. Because he knows me. Oh, I have good ambition now. I'll give it to the church. I do this, do that. He'd say, no, you stop relying on me. Yeah, you'd walk away. Man, that's a hard truth, Pastor. It's my truth. I know who I am. I'm not ashamed to admit it. God puts restriction in my life because He knows me. He knows who I am. Some of you complain about God because God says no on something that you really want to do. You're not fair. Other people do it. They do it over there. In that church, they let them do it. And they can't do it. You know, God, you just hate me. And all you don't care about me. No. God knows you. He knows me. And he may say, you can't do this anymore. And I say, well, there's nothing wrong with that. There's no sin in that, God. I can do that. That's okay. He's like, yeah, I know. But see, you won't stop there. You will take that and go to this and go to that and go to that. And so I'm just going to stop you right here. Amen. Then we complain. Then we don't understand that God's doing it all for his glory. 
You say, I've got somebody I want you to be. And you can't be that if you just run willy-nilly God over your own life. You can't do it. So God knows me. He knows my weaknesses. But the great thing it is, He doesn't disqualify me because of my weakness. He allows His strength to qualify me. And that is a great tie and God is so smart because if I want to stay qualified, I got to stay connected. I got to. Because if all the power and all the strength and all the wisdom and all the stuff is coming from Him, if I disconnect from it, I'm on my own. I have nothing to offer. I have nothing to give. All I have is flesh and carnality. But if I stay connected to Him like a plug-in on a lamp, you may see the bright bulb, but man, there's juice coming through that wire making it go. The world may see the bright glow in you, but don't ever realize that the strength comes from the cold. The strength comes by staying plugged in. That's what brings it. Because you illuminate the electricity, you're just a dull bulb just like anybody else. But you stay plugged in and you can burn bright. That's what you got to do. And I promise you, don't go to God and say, well, God, I'm strong in this, strong in that, strong in that. God, you can use me in this because I'm really strong. I'm really strong in this. Go to God and say, God, I'm weak. But God, where can you be my strength? Teach me a way to rely upon you that's outside my comfort zone. Through, if there's any success at all, there's no way I can give anybody the glory but you because I'm not good enough to do it. God loves it like that. Go read the story about Gideon. Gideon had him an army big enough to whip him. And God's like, no, no, no. Scale them down. Why, God? We got him on the run. We can do this. He's, and God called him out on it. He said, because I know you. And I know these people. If they go out there and they whip them, they won't give me the credit. They'll say, look at this army we built. Look at what we've accomplished. Man, we're strong. We're awesome. We're mighty Israel. God said, I don't want them to have a victory like that. God wants you to have the victory when it's totally dependent on him. That's why he scaled down that guy's army to 300 men. He said, now you guys are going to do it. And they never, ever raised a sword to the enemy. God took care of it all. Go read it. It's amazing. Some of your biggest victories that you have not experienced yet are on the other side of your weakness. It's on the other side of it. It's not on the other side of your strength. You keep leaning towards it. You keep trying to be strong in it and say, well, one day I'll break through and I'll really get that victory. God's saying you're leaning to the wrong side. Lean not on your own understanding. But trust in me. Acknowledge me in all your ways. Lean into him and say, God, I need you to accomplish this. That's by our head. Every bed battle. Every eye closed. I want to ask you this morning to be real honest, to be blunt and honest with yourself with yourself. I've already told you I know there's not one of us here that don't have weaknesses, don't have problems. But I want you to actually address it. If you're here today and say Pastor, I've been guilty. I've been guilty of trying to hide all my weaknesses and just put my strengths up front and been relying on myself to get by way too much. And it's limited me in what I can do for the Lord. If you're here and you agree with that, then real quickly, can I just see your hand? Thank you. Hands going up all over this place. Guys, there's so much victory to win on the other side of our weakness. You just got to trust God with it. You got to trust God with it. And if you'll trust God with it, I promise you, you're going to get connected. You're going to get plugged in. And you're going to start to see a source of power and anointing flowing in that part of your life. Because for the first time ever, that perfection is going to come and rest on that imperfection. It's going to finally start to click like, whoo, this is who I'm supposed to be. Because I was never called to just be myself. I was called to be in Christ and Him in me. That's the way it goes. That's the deal. So right now, we had a lot of people raise their hand. If you want to come down and pray, I would love to pray with you right down here. These altars are open. You can make your way down.